Hi, good people. Hi, 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 good people. Are you well? <laughs> it is that day. <laughs> you know the day? <laughs> the day that you share with me because it is my day. <laughs> it is my day. So how is how is you on my day? I know to some of you it is early morning, to others it is night, to others it is another time. Whatever time it is, welcome to Once Upon a Time Monday. My day. Our today's Once Upon a Time is about a thief and a motivational speaker. A thief and a motivational speaker. Once upon a time, there lived two boys in a village. These boys were childhood friends. As time ro rolled on, one of them moved out of the village and grew up to become a motivational speaker, while the other friend remained behind and became a thief, <laughs> started earning his living by steering here and there and harassing people. <laughs> one day, one day, the boy who became a motivational speaker came to his own town. A session was planned or um, a discourse was organized by the villagers and for the villagers. Among all other people, his childhood friend also came to listen to the public speaker's discourse. Remember, they were childhood friends. As soon as the public speaker saw his friend, he recognized him and called him in front and made him sit near him. <laughs> the friend is if. <laughs> the session started. Everyone was spellbound. When the discourse ended, applause erupted. In end, the public speaker said, This village is my birthplace. I want to build a hospital and it would cost 10 millions. And I would, and I would hope to collect this amount from this pondium today, today, today. I want to collect it from here. A basket will come to you. Please put as much amount as you can. So that friend of the saint also took out his 10,000 from his pocket to give in charity. And people started donating generously. 2,000, 5,000, 50,000, 10,000, 100,000, 200,000, and the bag was still circulating, circulating, circulating. At this point, <laughs> the saint, the, 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 the public speaker's friend, the thief, <laughs> started thinking. <laughs> when so much money was already had already been collected, then he, he said, uh, I, I want to give an amount also myself. He is saying with, with his own heart. In the heart he has a conversation or he had a conversation. He decided he wanted to give, he wanted to give uh, 10,000. But then, seeing that a lot of money had been collected, now he said, now, after they have created all this money, why should I give 10? I'll give them 5,000. 
So he reduced his donation to 5,000. As the, the basket circulated, then it was said that now the money has even passed beyond the, the expected. Then he said, ah, if that is what they are doing, they have a lot of money, then I will not give much money. So he reduced his donation to 1,000. One. Soon, 20 million was collected. Remember, this is double what the motivational speaker had suggested. At that moment, when that money was uh, collected, there was a power failure. <laughs> they were in darkness. I hope you are not thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> when the basket came, now to this Fred, the thief, he thought that uh, when the donation amount was doubled from the target, then why to put even 1,000 now? He immediately put his money back in his pocket. So he donated zero. <laughs> Did he steal? I don't know. <laughs> Soon, the session was over. The power was restored. And mostly people left. This Fred thief also got up and started working with the motivational speaker. While walking... This boy, who is now the friend of the motivational speaker, started praising his friend for his popularity and his good deeds. He said, my friend, I don't know where you went. I don't know which schools you attended, but you speak amazingly. What an influence you have. You asked for 10 millions and 20 millions have been collected. Oh, that is great. The motivational speaker kept listening for some time and then said, uh, my friend, I don't know whether I should ask or not. Still, I am curious to know, how much money did you donate? <laughs> the friend replied, very honest, just tell me the truth. Please, please don't hide. And the boy said, "Ah, uh, that is now the Fred, the Fred who is now a thief, village thief, international thief." <laughs> he said, "In fact, I gave nothing. I realized that you had received a lot of money, so I even the little I had, I did not give. Actually, I did not give anything." So the motivational speaker said, "Then, what effect does my speaking?" What effect does my motivational speech have in you or on you? If, I, if you think that I am, an, 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 I am an, an amazing speaker, how did it help? If you cannot even participate in donating to change a cause in our family, in, in our village, you mean I cannot even encourage my own friend to donate for a good cause? At this point, the thief said, No, it is not so. <laughs> Remember, when light was turned off, I felt like stealing some money from the basket, but I did not. Remember, I live by stealing, eh? <laughs> It was the effect of your speech that I did not do such a thing. You have inspired me that even when there was money near me and it was total darkness, I did not steal. <laughs> so now we are safe. The thief did not thief. <laughs> ha! The motivational speaker looked at his friend and asked him, Oh, you are a thief. Okay. 
<laughs> and the story ended. The event, the hospital was built. We shall go to open it one day. <laughs> ha! Don't I love this thief? <laughs> so now we can continue with our week. Or what do you want to hear? Oh, let us ask something. You see, a good company, my dear Fred, good company will save you from bad deeds. Please, to our sons and our daughters and to all of us, keep good company if you want to be a good person. Walk with someone who is better than you, someone who can encourage you, someone who can challenge you to be better than you are now. Thank you. And God bless you this on this my day. <laughs> you are blessed on my day. <laughs> Have a great week ahead, once upon a time. Good morning, my dear Fred. I'm sure you're very well. It is Monday, the 20th day of November in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2023. We are on week 33 in Ordinary Time. Our gospel passage is taken from Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43. Here we have Luke's version of the story of the blind man called by Mark Bar Timaeus, the son of Timaeus or Timaeus. <laughs> In Mark, the story is strategically placed at the end of a long teaching section where Jesus' disciples are slowly de deepening their understanding of Jesus and his mission. The story, full of sabers, sums up all that has gone before. It is like a mini gospel. Okay? In Luke, the story has also a very significant positioning. It falls between two other stories both about rich people. One has a highly religious man who was not able to accept Jesus' condition that he share his wealth with the poor before becoming a disciple. The other is about a man who supposedly was anything but religious and yet after meeting Jesus, gives away a large promotion of his wealth, a large proportion of his wealth to the poor. Which of these was really blind? In addition, the first story of a rich man is followed by the third prediction of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, after which, says Luke, the disciples did not understand what Jesus was talking about. We read in 18 verse number 34, they understood nothing about all these things. In fact, what he, was, what he said was hidden from them and they did not grasp what was said. They too are blind. As the story opens, we are told that Jesus was approaching Jericho. Remember, Jericho was already a very ancient city located about eight kilometers west of the river Jordan and about 25 kilometers northeast of Jerusalem. In Jesus' time, the Jericho of the Old Testament was largely abandoned. But a new city south of the old one has been built by Herod the Great. It was the last main stop 
for Jesus before arriving in Jerusalem. In Mark's version, Jesus is leaving Jericho. But here, Luke has Jesus approaching the city. Mark has Jesus leaving Jericho on the way to Jerusalem and his passion, and the blind man becomes his follower. Luke has Jesus going into and through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem because he wants to bring in Zacchaeus, a story not mentioned by other, either Mark or Matthew. The story begins with a blind man sitting beside the road begging. As we have mentioned before, the road is the way to Jerusalem on which all of Jesus' disciples must walk together with him. When the beggar hears that Jesus is passing by, he begins to call out in a loud voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. By addressing Jesus as son of David, he implies Jesus' role as Messiah King. The people tell him to keep quiet. A useless beggar like him has no right disturbing the master. But the man ignores them and keeps crying out. Now Jesus stops. If the man had not kept calling out, Jesus might not have heard him and might have passed forever out of his life. Now, how often does that happen to me? Jesus orders the man to be brought to him. Again, it is always through other people that we come to know Jesus. And sometimes it will be through me and only through me that others will come to know him. Did you hear that? I may be the only link that a person has with Jesus. T Remember that, my dear friend. It's not me, it's not Father CK. Me is you. Something to think about. On the other hand, I may be the one person who blocks someone approaching Jesus in his way. This reminds me of a story I had yesterday. Yesterday was Sunday, yeah. A story I had yesterday. A family that conspired to make sure that a certain boy does not go to the seminary. Not because their son was to go to the seminary. Actually, they didn't have even, even a son. They only had daughters. Not that they wanted, they wanted even the man to marry their daughter. No. They were just jealous. And for whatever reason, they succeeded. The boy never joined the seminary. So they blocked we, we can be like that family. We, we have so many people here who block people from getting to know Jesus, from getting even the other blessings, not because they'll, go, they'll be there themselves, simply because jealousy is eating them. We saw earlier what happens to those who are a scandal, a stumbling block to Jesus. Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? It's a question that he keeps asking me and you. So how do I answer? Have my answers changed over the years? Today, let me reflect what I really want from him and ask him for it. Now, listen to this man's response to Jesus' question. Lord, let me see again. Of course, one might think it was a natural response from a person who was blind, but in a wider sense, so is each one of us. We all need to see. It is our poor sight that prevents us from knowing Jesus and seeing where he wants us to go. We could hardly make a better request. Jesus immediately responds, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. If only we too had the faith that would help us to see clearly. If we too had the faith that would help us to treat other people human, humanly. 
And what did the man do when he could see? He became a follower of Jesus and gave glory to God. No longer blind, no longer a beggar, no longer by the road, but on the road with Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. On the road, not by the road. And Jesus is the road, the way to Jerusalem and all that it means. That is the natural response for those who can really see. Just before this, remember, the rich man who wanted eternal life was not able to see and so could not accept Jesus' invitation. But tomorrow we will meet someone who did have his eyes opened and responded generously. The story also applies to Jesus' disciples who gradually will have their eyes opened to and then they will understand why Jesus had to suffer and die on his way to glory. They will understand that it was the uttermost proof of God's love for each one of us. My dear friend, Jesus is asking each one of us today, what do you want me to do for you? My daughter, what do you want me to do for you? My son, what do you want me to do for you? How I would pray that our answer will be that of transformative nature so that we can be the hands that he will use to clean and to transform the world all for his greater glory. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Monday.